Good afternoon, fellow Plexers. And even though my Windows clock says it's almost 8 p.m. at night, I don't use Windows too often, and I got rid of the safety of elementary OS and booted into a tiny Windows install just to make this tutorial video. Today we are going to install Plex from scratch on a Windows computer and I will show you how to set up some libraries and get yourself going with Plex. So let's jump in. Um, Plex has tons of wonderful support documents and you really should not consider installing Plex without jumping in and um, reading some of these. And keep this URL handy. It's just support.plex.tv slash articles. So I think I got two windows open. So if I, I've already downloaded the Windows install directly from Plex, not from Microsoft. And it's right here. And let me open it. And I'll let it install to its default location and let it be named what they want to name it. So let's launch it. And a window opens and I'm going to sign in with my email. And let me pause the video and get signed in and we'll start back up after that. All right, I have my credentials pasted in. And Plex is starting for the first time. Now I have three other servers running under my account. My original Synology NAS, which isn't being used by anyone, and my current Synology NAS, a DS1520 Plus, and that's where my friends and family are streaming off from. And then I have a little test unraid install on an Intel i5 11th gen um, processor that's in a little Intel NUC. And that's a dream install. So this is a um, 12th gen i9 Intel CPU with a um, included great iGPU and I have a 3060 NVIDIA GPU card in this um, desktop computer. Okay, so we'll keep going and Plex wants to name this by, by my motherboard name. So we're just going to shorten this to Win11 Test. I'll uncheck this. I previously posted a remote access video but we're not going to get into that with this. So apparently this is new. I'm not used to it. Plex is suggesting um, some libraries and I don't have anything at those locations. So I have a folder um, on the C drive called media and inside I have some sort folders for movie libraries and TV show libraries and then an actual music library folder. This is all public domain um, type of media. In the movie sort folder I have a documentary movie library folder, a kids one, and a main movie library folder. And in the TV library sort folder I have a library folder for the main TV shows and for the kids and it's all stuff that doesn't have copyright protection on it anymore. So let me move that off screen and we will add our first library. So I'll add 
a movie library, and this will be the main library, so we'll just call it Movies. And now we'll browse for the media, and I will pick the C drive, Media. I will click into the Sort folder, and then click the Movie-Main, and you'll see the movies I have loaded. So now if I click Add Library, Plex is going to start scanning that in. So let's add all our libraries. Movie again. And we'll point this one again to the movie sort folder and into the documentary one. We'll add library. Now one more movie library and we'll call this one kids. And we'll browse the same way. And now we'll add the two TV show libraries. We'll just call this TV shows for the main series library. We'll browse into my sort folder for the two TV show libraries. Pick the main one. Now we'll add the the kids TV show library. We'll browse to that. And lastly we'll add a music library. And there is no sort folder because there's only the one music library. So now we can click next. And this screen tells you to go get your apps, your client apps, and we'll click done. And let me go into the settings. And we'll see for the wind test server that we do not have remote access. But I do have remote access on the other servers. Let me change to this one. You'll see that that's a go. My Unraid server has the green check mark, as does my latest Synology NAS server. So we'll change back to the Win 11 test. And I'll go down to manage libraries and you'll notice that this server is detecting intros for some of the TV shows. It's already scanned everything else. So if we click into library, uh, the library tab, you'll see that it got all the metadata everything scanned in properly and if we go back to the Plex support documents And we bring in my file manager window. You'll see that every movie um, has a name that's been pulled from the movie database. And I'm including the movie database ID number in the movie folder. And then you'll also see, okay, so again, I'm not good with windows. You'll also see that the, 
the, the database ID number for the movie database is listed in the file name and I actually have three different versions of this movie um, or four different versions of this movie because I wanted to show you that feature also. So let's get back to Plex. Oh well, well let's go into naming movies to start with. So Plex explains everything. You can pull this movie um, name for the folder and the file name directly from either TMDB or IMDB and then for an extra insurance to a match you can add the IMDB um, database number or the TMDB database number. I prefer working out of the movie database and that's how I have my file name set up. So if we click these three dots here we'll see that we can play whatever version we want. Um, and there's two different 4K versions, and there's a 1080p version and a 720p version. So now if we go into the documentary series, or library, apparently I have to... Well, let's fix that. So this is a new server, so I want to go to general and run setting under general here. I've, I'll click automatically sign in, save changes. Okay, so this is a public domain now or a royalty free uh, movie and that was added properly. And here's my kids movie library. It's actually made up of a bunch of shorts, but they're all public domain now. The, the copyright has run out on them. If I go to the regular TV show library, I have these three shows. The first season of the Beverly Hillbillies um, ran out of copyright protection. Life with Elizabeth um, is not copyright protection, protected. It's Betty White's first series. And The Lucy Show is royalty free for the first season. And you'll see the specials scanned in also because I followed the Plex naming convention everywhere I needed to. Um, so if we get into TV show libraries to the Lucy show. You can name your specials folder either season space OO or specials. And Windows is going to drive me nuts because apparently these aren't saved globally, these options for the for the file manager. So I am following the naming guide to a T for TV show episodes too. So the actual folder um, is pulled from either the movie database or TV database. IMD is, IMDB is not involved in a um, series library with Plex at all. So this would be the proper show name at the movie database. Just the Lucy show would be the proper name at TVDB, which is the database I work out of, but by default I'll add the series year to it to help Plex improve things. So whatever you name the show folder, the episode must be named that, and then it's either a space dash space or a period, and then you have the season episode coding, again with a space dash space or a period with the episode name, which is optional. And then Plex also says that we can put extra information into brackets to have that information ignored while the um, scanner goes to work on the media. So this just tells me that it's a 40p copy. Um, it's an MPEG-4 two-channel audio in the AAC form. 
and I name all my files this way with FileBot. And you can see these are named similarly, um, 360p, and these are 480p in the um, H.264 format, one channel sound, AAC for the audio. So that's about it. The most important part of all of this is to follow Plex's naming guides and just follow everything they have to say. Read whatever you can and you'll do fine. Um, well, let's show the music library. So I only have a couple artists. This was a, a free album I could get my hands on. The album artwork came in because I matched this up with Music Brains Picard first before I um, did anything else. Clara Smith, apparently there's no photo for her in the Plex database, but I had a album art um, photo that I could inject into the actual song. And various artists has this song by Mamie Smith, which is in the public domain. So that's it. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to check out my remote access video to learn how to enable that for your Plex server. Okay. I'm going to join this video to the one I just made because I neglected to show hardware acceleration in this Windows install of Plex. So you have to go to the settings and you have to go to the transcoder section and click use hardware accelerated when available, click save changes. I don't know why it's not seeing the iGPU to switch to it, but it is seeing my NVIDIA graphics card. Now let's get rid of some of these extra windows. Okay, so I will pull up dashboard. And I have the Plex HTPC client app loaded. And I can safely play this Big Buck Bunny video. And I'm going to select the 4K AV1 encode. So you'll see it's just direct playing, which is how we always want things. But I can force a transcode. And you'll see that we have the little HW in parentheses showing that the graphics card is actually using hardware acceleration to handle that transcode. Um, so I just wanted to point that out. I forgot to talk about enabling hardware acceleration if you have a Plex Pass. You need a Plex Pass to enable that. Again, thanks for watching.